Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and share. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Sjogren's syndrome is a chronic, systemic and autoimmune disease that became recognized and named by Dr. Henrik Sjogren in 1933. The disease affects moisture-producing exocrine glands located all over the body, primarily the salivary and the lacrimal glands causing a decrease in tears and saliva production resulting in dryness of the mouth called xerostomia and dryness of the eyes called xerophthalmia. Two forms of Sjogren's syndrome are recognized so far, the primary Sjogren's syndrome and the secondary Sjogren's syndrome. In primary Sjogren syndrome, which is also known as Sika syndrome, only the moisture-producing exocrine glands are affected and no other autoimmune disease is present. However, in secondary Sjogren syndrome, patients experience another associated autoimmune disease in addition to Sjogren syndrome. The associated autoimmune disease in 15% of patients is rheumatoid arthritis. In addition, secondary Sjogren's syndrome may also develop in 30% of patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. Coming to the causes of Sjogren's syndrome, the exact cause of Sjogren's syndrome is not known. However, research suggests that genetic factors and sex hormones when combined with an environmental factor such as a viral or a bacterial infection may trigger the development of Sjogren's syndrome. The genetic factors can be the presence of a malformed gene in the body's immune cells and the sex hormone can be the female estrogen, indicating the condition much more common in women than men, mostly affecting middle-aged women between 40 to 60 years. Let's look into the pathophysiology of Sjogren's syndrome. The disease process starts when salivary glands become infected with a viral or a bacterial infection. This causes salivary cells to break down and expose their nuclear components to circulating antigen-presenting cells. These nuclear components are picked up by the antigen-presenting cells and are presented to the CD8 or T cells. The T cells get abnormally activated in patients with Sjogren's syndrome and consider the nuclear components of the salivary cells as foreign antigens. The T cells then produce cytokines and further activate B cells which then produce anti-nuclear autoantibodies or ANAs against these antigens. The anti-nuclear autoantibodies are the anti-SSA and the anti-SSB autoantibodies produced against SSA and SSB antigens. Together, the anti-nuclear autoantibodies and the T and B cells reach the site of glandular destruction and promote cellular breakdown by recreating more immune cells and producing more autoantibodies in the area, hence resulting in further loss of the secretory cells of the glands, which ultimately results in a reduction of salivary flow. The severity of the disease differs in individuals. The principal oral symptom of Sjogren's syndrome includes a dry mouth. Patients experience difficulty in swallowing, altered speech, or difficulty in wearing dentures. The dryness of the mouth reaches to the extent that tongue becomes fissured and exhibits atrophy of the papillae. Oral mucosa might become red and painful as a result of secondary candidiasis. Bilateral enlargement of the major salivary glands, which are usually non-painful, may also be observed. Furthermore, the reduced amount of saliva production causes a lack of salivary cleansing action which predisposes the patient to dental decay. The ocular symptoms can be presented by the term keratoconjunctivitis seca. In keratoconjunctivitis seca, the eyes become dry, which causes patients to complain of a scratchy sensation or the feeling of presence of a foreign body in the eye. The conjunctival epithelium becomes inflamed, resulting in blurred vision and sometimes an aching pain in the eyes. 
although xerostomia and xerophthalmia are the most common symptoms, dryness can also occur in areas where these moisture-producing exocrine glands are located, such as skin and mucosa, resulting in dry areas including the skin, nose, sinuses, throat, ears, and in women, the vagina. Schirmer's test can be used to assess the flow of tears and is done by holding a strip of paper under the eye and measuring the amount of tears over a period of time. Similarly, salometry can be done to measure salivary flow. And blood tests, of course, can be used to indicate the presence of anti-SSA and anti-SSB autoantibodies. Lip biopsy indicates infiltration of minor salivary glands with immune cells. The treatment for patients with Sjogren's syndrome is supportive and aims at reducing the patient's symptoms. Dry eyes are best managed with the periodic use of artificial tears. Similarly, artificial saliva can be used for the treatment of dry mouth. Sialogogue medications such as pilocarpine can be useful to stimulate salivary flow. Since patients with Sjogren's syndrome are at an increased risk of dental decay, daily fluoride applications are indicated. Symptoms can also be relieved by the use of oral hygiene products like mouth rinses and regular toothbrushing. Antifungal therapy is needed to treat secondary candidiasis. So this was all about Sjogren's Syndrome. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.